Now, as we've been discussing all morning, millions are set for travel chaos this week as the train drivers union, ASLEF, begins its first strike of the year. This is coinciding with a nine-day ban on overtime, which started yesterday. It comes as it's revealed that rail bosses pocketed huge bonuses and pay rises despite failing to minimise the impact of the strikes. Talk Today correspondent Nick Ellaby is at Waterloo Station in London for us. What's the mood down there at the moment, Nick? Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Rosie. The mood, I'd say, is one of uh, defiance and frustration here at the, uh, the picket line. The Aslef train drivers are starting a, a kind of week-long strike which is designed to maximise the disruption to commuters but also minimise the amount of money lost by those train drivers. Today, Tuesday, we're starting with services on the south coast, so sort of southern, southeastern, uh, Thameslink and also southwestern trains not running today at all. And then tomorrow that moves to Great Northern and the Transpanning Express. That, that overtime ban you mentioned over the next week or so really hitting Transpanning Express services because they rely on, on drivers working overtime. Uh, in terms of the commuters, refunds are available for people with season ticket holders or train tickets that have been bought in advance. All of this is over pay and conditions for train drivers of the ASLEF union in England. Some of the services that are under strikes this week do run into Scotland and Wales, but this is mostly affecting services in England. Uh, I've spoken this morning to ASLEF South East representative Mars Colombini, who called some of the bonuses that the train company execs are receiving at the moment scandalous when drivers are actually looking for more money and protecting those conditions that they have in place as well. I also asked him if there was an offer that uh, he would be able to shake on and we could all go home happy. And uh, here's what he told me this morning. It's certainly quite scandalous and obscene when, when you look at the the size of some of these numbers, particularly when some of these bonuses are being awarded to, to top executives who haven't actually delivered very much. Um, having said that, I'm not in the business of picking holes in how much money people earn. Uh, that, that's something that's quite often used against us. What we earn as train drivers in the terms of conditions of employment we enjoy should be something that other workers aspire to, not something that other workers are made to feel envious of. Just finally, Mars, is there an offer that if they popped it on the table today, you'd say, thank you very much, let's all go home? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, when they make that offer, we'll tell you whether it's good enough and whether it's time to go home. But until such an offer is made, it's very, very difficult for me or anybody else uh, to tell you whether that would be the right kind of offer or not. Boost, mix here, peace. Negotiating table uh, at Waterloo is the General Secretary of ASEF now, Mick Whelan. Mick, good morning, can you hear me? Good morning, how are you? Really well, thank you. Please explain to us, we've just heard from one of your uh, colleagues there and representatives, why when people try and get the train today, it is going to be a real headache. And this is now for nearly 18 months, I think actually over 18 months, that strike action has scuppered us getting to work. Well, quite simply, the government have created a strike situation in the 16 Westminster Talks. Um, we haven't had a pay rise for five years. We didn't seek a pay rise for two years of the pandemic. When inflation started going through the roof um, in year three, like every other sector, we sought to get a pay rise. Um, the government have decided that we're not worth it. They're interfering in free collective bargaining. Yet the 16 private companies that we work for are making hundreds of millions of pounds, paying dividends to their shareholders, um, where they have no revenue risk, no uh, productivity risk and no performance risk. But there is a pay offer on the table, isn't there? Which would, on average, give your drivers a pay increase from about £60,000 to £65,000. Why haven't you put that to your members? Well let's, well, let's deal with that. We've been dealing... We've got free collective bargaining arranged with all these companies we've been dealing with in the 23 years. They understand our free collective bargaining that they enter into. We do not put deals out that we can't recommend or deals that we've rejected. We rejected that offer in April. So it was never going to our members. But also, I get fed up with the RDG and other people dissembling. Did they mention the fact that uh, they put all the red lines that we'd spent a month removing into that deal at short notice? Did they mention that they changed the deal overnight after we left the poor offer they'd already made? And did they mention the fact that we'd rejected it and they knew it wasn't going to our members? But you don't know your members are going to reject it if you don't ask them. Well, I think we, I do three or four branches a week. I speak to my members continually. 
Um, and our members have had to be reballoted three or four times in this dispute under the really peculiar and draconian trade union laws we have in the UK. And they've come back with their voice saying, we don't want it. We want to fight for our futures uh, by 94 to 99 per cent. And the mandate is growing. I think uh, they have spoken. Mr. Whelan, it's Nick here. I just want to know what you have to say about your members, your train drivers who are reasonably well paid, preventing lower paid people from accessing the jobs they need to put food on the table. Well, those lower paid people in the UK were paid us and pay. We do want to get into the politics of envy. I believe all those people should have a decent standard of living. I don't believe by us not having it, you're going to give it to anybody else, because we've asked that question before. So this isn't about the politics of from getting to work. This is, about, this is about half a decade without a pay rise. Well, these strikes don't seem to be working, do they? Because you've been on strike for, as very as you said, more than 18 months now, or intermittent strikes for more than 18 months now, and you still haven't got any closer to what you want. Well, if it takes another 18 months, that's what it takes. But we will keep articulating the voice of our members until people come to the table in the companies that we work for. I think it just Let's comes bear down in to mind that we've done 14 pay members. deals in the last 12 months. You're speaking on behalf of your members, but then you're not giving them all of the opportunities to say, actually, after 18 months of not being paid for all those days I went out on strike, maybe I'd be happy with £65,000. And when we look at the RMT union, Mick Lynch did exactly that. He went to his members and they said, yes, we'll take it. So I think that the difficult thing to justify is why you're not just saying, OK, we'll put it out to everyone, they get a vote, and then we take stock of the situation after that. Well, quite simply, because the RDG, the government, everybody that speaks to you, dissembles and lies. They keep forgetting about all the red lines that they put in there at the last moment. They're unacceptable. The red lines that are our members' policy. So our members talk to us on a regular basis. I see them on a regular basis. And this is their view. And you see behind me the strength of feeling. In the mandates that we get, you see the strength of feeling. They are not willing to give up all their terms and conditions for a 20% pay cut. So what would you, what would you accept? I, I know you're going to say we can't negotiate through the, the airwaves, but I think help us understand if you can't get home today or you can't get to work, what is it that you want that you think you're not getting that isn't fair? 70 grand, 75 grand, what is it? I think at this moment in time we need somebody to come to the table who can actually make a deal who's not going to be dishonest, who's not going to be deceitful, who's not going to be dishonourable, and is willing to give my members a cost of living increase on a clean basis so we can move forward and get out of this ridiculous dispute, which is Westminster-driven. Mm. OK, Mick, thank you very much indeed for your time. That's Mick Whelan, who uh, runs the Aslef Union.